side, talk to Kurt, get some updates on the panel upgrade and the annual, and uh, come right back you guys. Hey folks, welcome back. So here is November 6th, 8, 8, 7 November at Motor Aviation. I'm still doing the annual inspection. As you can see, they do a very good job in Motor Aviation. They take the tail apart, go over everything possible. Oh, it's a little dark in there. You really can't see much. But they take every panel apart, every inspection panel apart to go through the annual inspection. As you can see underneath here, they do a really, really good job of everything. Um, we're going to walk around to the front and work our way into the spaghetti panel uh, because they are doing the Dynon system we talked about with the Avidyne 540. It's also going in. We ran into a couple of hiccups, and I'll explain to that a little later. Uh, but here is the good thing with the... Uh, the Ranger is all the avionics are on the uh, uh, plates or on the outside of the airplane, so it's very e it's easy for them to get access to uh, the wiring and the harnesses on both sides. If you had a 201 windshield, um, the windshield will come down and kind of block that. Um, so, and then you guys really take the whole panel apart, do a lot more work to get to the wiring and to the trays. But that's basically it on the top of the, of the engine. I'm sorry, on the top of the airplane here. And the two's still apart. Let's hop inside. Someone's phone's ringing. So here is the mess inside. I was told I can hop on here. So this is what we got so far in the panel. Um, we ran into a couple of hiccups with the room. You know the guy, you know that Mooney has not a, you know, big panel per se, uh, a little tight. Uh, but we figured it out and I'll talk about it in, in the next uh, video setting here. But here's the panel. Um, again, I'm gonna have the, uh, the SL30, uh, the 540, the Avidyne 540, and then two 10-inch screens, uh, one on the pilot side, one on the co-pilot side, with um, autopilot when that comes available, but they are going to put the plate in and stuff of that nature in, and then once the autopilot comes in, it will go right in. Um, the, the wing leveling system that it currently has, um, the PC system, that is getting ripped out. Um, so all the airbags be gone. Um, so everything's basically going to be gone out of that system. So it lightens the plant up a little bit. And also suction's going to be gone. There's going to be no pump for that to worry about. It's electronic. So it's all going to be perfectly lighten the plant up just a little bit. Nothing crazy, but we'll lighten the plant up a little bit. But this is basically it. And I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I had to change. Um, well, that's that. And this is the front I was telling you about, top, top review. All right, back on the ground here. So yeah, so that's basically it. Um, we, have a, we have a few more, probably another few weeks to go. Um, and it will be all done. But more aviation they really really go through your plane um, with their annuals and that is Pete Pete is our avionics guy he is really 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 good um, they, again they do a really really good job here in motor aviation they really go over your whole plane Let's go underneath the plane real quick. A little dark under here, but they really go through. Every, they really go through everything on an annual. There's no cutting corners at all. At all.
right, guys, welcome back. So we are in the avionics office, Pete's office, and you know I went over a video with this already. Um, it's in my history of my videos of the Dynon Skyview. Um, so mine came in, and this is the box. So I'm gonna kind of really quickly um, get an idea what kind of show you guys what it looks like. I'm trying to do the camera all at the same time here, so bear bear with me. Um, these are all the all new wiring. Basically, this upgrade, the, the, my airplane, did get all new wiring in the panel. Basically, every single wire harness and wiring and uh, fuses is all gonna be brand new. And oh, look at that! It's like Christmas. So um, I'm gonna take one of these out. Hope I don't get yelled at for taking one of these out, but it's okay. Music any on that. So basically, let's put this box down. Let's not crack the screen like we crack our phones, right? So it'll be easy with it. And there you go. So there is the 10 inch screen from Dynon is right here. So the light's kind of blocking it, but same thing as the display, which is right here same exact screen um, as appears here which I have so two 10 inch screens and of course the EFIS um, uh, for backup uh, turn coordinator whatever you want to call it so I got two of those it's like Christmas for me today so they came in I'm gonna put that back in the box and then the backups the turn coordinator is in here this is all the other wiring that has to go in so put that back in the box and like I said before basically everything getting rewired uh, all wiring um, it just goes with the screens and a couple odds and ends engine monitoring uh, all that fun stuff outside temperature put that back in here and then more wiring goes in here this is the USB port um, basically, that's what you'll do to download um, all your charts, IFR high, low, and uh, VFR charts. And some other odds and ends here, some fuses. Um, but basically, I was talking to the installer, Pete, which is really, really good with the avionics. This system uses so, like, not a lot of power, basically. A lot of less amp ampage, considering, you know, what we have in our planes currently. This uses less than what that uses. So the, my um, alternator is perfect for it. There's not gonna be an issue that I currently have. It was actually updated a long time ago, um, about a couple years ago, I guess they were saying. So the alternator will be able to handle everything. And go over here, I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like. I'm stealing his computer. So we had some, 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 some concerns. I really, because I know how the Mooney is, I couldn't really fit uh, the audio panel, the IFD 540 from Avidyne, and my Lynx and my SL30. I couldn't fit it in the center stack. So what we have to do is uh, most likely go with a, um, what did he call it exactly? I kind of forgot what he said already. So a, a modular that basically goes in the tail. Um, so it's, a, it's an L3 transponder, um, but it's remote. So what that would do is it works very, very well with the um, 540 Mavidine. So basically, instead of having my transponder, um, like I currently have on the bottom, uh, instead of having all that right there, it will, everything will be in the IFD uh, 540 from Avidine. So basically, I squawk, I go with the squawk, and so on and so forth using it, using the uh, GPS, um, the Avidine 540. So that's gonna have to come up, that's gonna have to go away. Um, the 10 inch screen, 10 inch screen, my backup, turn coordinator, uh, autopilot, and then also the altimeter settings, perimeter settings will be here as, a, as a, you can, you, you can click the buttons and then do it with these knobs that's on the bottom of the uh, um, sky view. 
but there's, there's another one here for a backup, which is cool to have. So I might keep them there, or might put them horizontal down in the bottom. Uh, I'm going to get a whole new uh, for all my um, fuses. The fuses already actually already update my airplane. My airplane, like I said, folks, many times before, I bought it with uh, tons of upgrades already. That I have to spend the extra money on all the the, the fuses, alternators, wiring. It's been really really updated um, from the previous owner. So this is basically going to be my panel. So engine monitorings and uh, outside temperatures, all that fun stuff is going to be in the in the, the sky view from Dynon. So awesome, awesome system. And uh, basically, that's basically it. There's nothing else really to report on this end um, so far. So if you have any questions, let me know on the panel. But this is what I'm going to be doing. It's going to be the 540 and it's going to be the SL3. I didn't want to lose the SL3 uh, from Garmin. That's a good system um, to use as a secondary nav in a comm unit. Um, and it's, you know, I can have two HSIs going at the same time um, with the SL30 and the Avidine 540. So I'd rather have a backup um, nav comm than a backup just comm. Because um, the other option was, the other option was to go with... Uh, the Avidine, I'm sorry, Dynon comm system, which is right here. Um, but that that's not a navigation uh, radio like the SL30, which is right here. So this is my SL30. Um, you guys know the SL30 I have. Uh, it's been hardly ever used. Like I said, the plane was put together from the previous owner perfectly. So I'm going to keep this as a comm nav unit. Um, than to go with the Dynon um, just comm unit. So I had to make arrangements to, like I said, this, this is my current SL, uh, my L3 transponder right here. You guys see in my, plenty of my videos. So this unit, not this unit, but that will basically go into the tail um, and I will have that extra couple of inches to work with um, my panel. You know how Mooney's panels are, they're tight. You can only do so much. So I'm gonna have in the, the transponder remote in the tail. Basically run a wire through the airplane and put it in the tail and everything that's on my current L3 transponder it will all be on my 540 from Avidine. So that's basically it. And this is going to be basically the stack. So my COM, my SL30, and my uh, 540 uh, from Avidine. But I might, you know, again, put this in the bottom, um, whatever we, we decide to do on that part. But as you guys can see, my panel is going to be very clean. Uh, fuses, probably a cluster over here. Um, and that's going to be the panel. It'll be all glass. Um, so hopefully you guys agree with keeping the SL30 as a comm slash nav instead of just a comm. I think that's great because if you guys see this, um, this is just a, a, a model, display model, so you really can't do much with it. But the SL30 will work with this. So, and also the, the, uh, the Avidine 540 works with this as an HSI times two. So if I just get this, I'm not gonna have a backup uh, nav unit. So again, I would really prefer to have the nav unit uh, than just a comm unit. Um, so hopefully you guys agree. I, I am going to get this, this is what I was talking about on those two, two um, spots on the panel on the computer there. And this is what I'm also has to have, I can do it turn it or I can just click on it like I hear um, the display is not working that well right a second oh there we go so you can you can go like this on here and you can move it how high as you see 45 47 4800 or you can you know just use this hey Pete you're good no take your fun So these two right here, I'm going to go over to the screen again. So you have these two, not this, are going to be 
either on the left, which is right here, of my screen, and this is where the hole goes kind of for the yoke, or horizontal in front. So my thing with the horizontal in the, in the front would be that if I keep my iPad um, with me on the yoke, which I probably won't now because basically I have two iPads, right? So I might not do that anyway, but it would probably block that. But I'm also right-handed and I think that, you know, using everything for the left, left-handed, it would be weird. But also remember that the, the controllers for the autopilot is also in here. So I don't have to use this and I don't have to use the other um, knobs because that's all touch screen. You can use these two knobs to do all that work for you. So a lot of decisions to make. Um, what I'm probably going to do is keep it maybe how it is. And this is the backup uh, turn coordinator, uh, which is, I'll go back over here and kind of show you. This is where that's going. So this, this backup turn coordinator is right here. Um, it's the Avidyne EFIS. Uh, that, this unit is going to be in my panel over here right here so that's what all that's going to be so any questions with that let me know i have a so that's basically what i was some of the concerns we had when i came here this morning was making a decision do i go with the uh, dynons um, com and save that room for the transponder uh the l3 transponder which is this, you guys have seen it before, or do I get rid of the transponder, sell it, or, or work out a deal with L3, and do the remote, which will free up that much room on the panel, um, to be able to fit the, L3, the SL30. So I've decided to go with the remote route, keep my SL30, because again, it's a COM and it's a NAV, and go that route. Um, and it were, this would sync in well with the SL30 and it syncs in very well with the IFD 540. So that's what we're going with today and that is the update we have. And again, this is Skyview from Dynon, an awesome system, you know, and I mentioned it before with the engine monitoring and the tanks are really calibrated to almost like basically a gallon. So what, how they do it is they drain the tanks on the Mooney, 52 gallons. They will drain the tanks, and then they'll put two and a half gallons in at a time and set it, set it, set it until it's full, and the same thing on the right tank. Um, and engine monitoring, of course, um, cylinder temperature, oil temperatures, and everything else. Here's the cylinder temperatures. So it's going to be awesome, voltage, flaps, trim. Um, and then, of course, on the right side is your next away points. Uh, if you have a flight plan, from your iPad, you do the flight plan at home, you send it to the um, Avidyne 540, it goes into a uh, system, I mean, I'm sorry, it goes in, I forget how to get there exactly, a uh, flight plan. And then you see how it says Skyview, but right next to that will be um, Avidyne. And you click on that, and the Avidyne, this will pull the information from the Avidyne, and then you will have your, flights, your flight plan on this screen, and you can just do whatever you want to do and how you want to uh, place everything on your screen. Uh, Diane has this very well where you can kind of do what you want with the screen, move things around in settings and display settings. Anyway, we're back with you. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, so you can do menu, I'm sorry, display, go to setup, and you can remove engine bottom band. You can remove that, okay, and then go back to your display, your menu, I'm sorry, your display. Go full screen, and there you have everything. So, my plan is to once I get in flight levels, I'm cruising, is to move my 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 engine monitoring on the second screen, um, and you can go full screen, you know, and how you want to, whatever you want to do, uh, and or just take it away. There we go. To make it to move it to the right, move it to the left. You know, it's just it's a lot of things that you could do with the screen. How they make you, you know, setups. Move it to the engine bonnet on the bottom. Put it on the left. 
take this out. Uh, so, so much, so much to do here. There goes the map back. So yeah, so like I was saying before, and then once this system takes um, that flight plan, here's all your waypoints, your location, um, all the way down to your final, the ETA for your final. And this is a tape on the right hand side of the screen. You can move that around if you want. Um, really quickly, I'll go over it really quickly again, so I get a lot of questions on the engine monitoring. So here's the engine monitoring band on the bottom. Okay, you guys can see that. Um, so my plan is to, again, is to, once I'm in the flight, is to move this band on the right uh, screen, on the other 10 inch screen, on the, on the co-pilot side. And then basically I would do full screen, as you can see here, and then display, settings, and I'm gonna get rid of the bottom, the engine bottom band. You move that, exit out, and there you have your full screen, synthetic vision, um, and everything is right here. Your tapes, altimeter, uh, you know, right now it's working off the um, GPS nav 1, nav 2, and then that's what it basically would be, is sky view, um, then it would be the 540, and then again, you would, it would be, on my airplane, it would be the SL30. So, and these are all your different um, layovers. So that's going to be all perfectly fine for me, and, and again, to get you another turn coordinator, ball center, your two minute turn, right, left, and then that's just a backup on this side. This battery lasts about four hours if the, if the electrical goes, and the batteries in both screens last about a half an hour, um, so plenty of time to get somewhere safely if anything would happen. So there you have it, folks. Um, that's the update on the video I have today. I'm gonna, you know, keep in touch with everybody as much as I can. Um, you know, I can only go over my days off basically and uh, update everybody. So thank you for all the emails, folks. I really appreciate it. This has been a nice investment for me. I want to thank uh, Dynon. You know, those guys did a, a great partnership with me to work with them, to working with me on some pricing, some stuff to work together uh, to promote this great system. Because it is, I believe it's, you know, you have to believe in something to get it and believing something to try to promote. And I really, really believe in a Dynon system. And I, like I said before, um, it's just the best route for me. What I'll do is I'm gonna, you know, ed, you know cut the video off here and I'm gonna, you know, uh, have some questions that I have that I'm going to answer on a separate video, but I'll probably put all this together because it's probably a short video with everything I'm going to do, and plus editing. So stick around, we'll do all that fun stuff, and uh, any questions you have, and you guys know you can email me, email me at pilotfun101 at gmail.com with any questions you have. All right, stick around. Hey folks, well welcome back to my channel, and I'm still at Water Aviation in Mount Pocono. MPO is the identifier, and like I, had some videos going on about the Dynon system, about the airplane, how they do the annuals here. But I'd like to give a shout out definitely to Motor Aviation here at Mount Pocono Airport because they do such a great job with everybody's airplane. They really take it to heart and make sure things are done the right way. Um, some people tell me, well, they're a couple hundred bucks more expensive. They're, but you know what, for an extra couple hundred bucks, folks, they go through their plane thoroughly. And like you should every annual, you should go through your plane thoroughly, uh, no matter what the cost might might not be. Um, because again, it's your safety, your friends, family safety, if you're flying, you wanna make sure the plane is going through um, to benefit basically you and people on the ground and your family. Uh, God forbid something is missed at a, you know, one of those you know, you know cheap annuals that you go through it pretty quickly. Um, so, but great job with Motor Aviation. Those guys are great. And thank you so much for Motor Aviation to be sponsoring me. Uh, for some videos in the future and this one and a couple of others um, helped me with the Dynon system installation. 
So thank you, Kurt. Kurt is a manager here at Motivation, and thanks Pete. Pete is a great install installer for avionics. So any avionics questions you have, uh, contact Motor Aviation in Mount Pocono. Um, again, MPO is the airport identifier, and any questions you may have, they have for you. Uh, especially the ADSB is now mandatory to have in your airplane. So a couple questions I have. I have it in my notes here on my phone about the Dynon system, and also um, a couple of the questions I get. Uh, you know, I had it, since my other uh, videos went out, I've gotten more and more emails, questions regarding um, Avidyne and Dynon, and what they do, and, and is it worth putting in an airplane? Well, folks, again, it's basically your decision. Um, I think that the Dynon system is a great system uh, for the money. Um, I said that a couple of times. I've done my research over and over again, and it's basically what you want to get out of it. Uh, and if your plane is worth 20 grand, um, are you going to put? Do you want to put, you know, sixty thousand dollars worth of stuff in it on the panel? You might want to second guess that. And uh, but if you if you plan on keeping your airplane for a long period of time, like I am. Um, and again, I use my plane as an example because all I know is my airplane and an example that I use for myself. Um, but everybody has different story and different circumstances. But my airplane was very low time, uh, very low prop and hub time. Uh, I put majority of the hours on that airplane. You guys seen the paint, the paint's nine out of ten, the interior's nine out of ten, and so I felt that uh, with my research of even changing airplanes uh, to a Mooney 201 um, and so on and so forth was to uh, the fact that basically is that those planes are still 80,000 plus and if you get a Mooney M20C Ranger that's fully decked out they're up there in price uh, even a 201 that's not really decked out with the panel is still close to 80,000 more for a Mooney 201 so I decided to, you know, keep my airplane. It's basically me. I might bring friends with me. I might bring some family friends with me. Uh, and how many times do you really have four people in the airplane? Um, but you know, people say, well, would you look at, you know, the arrows or anything like that that's out in the market. Folks, the Mooney is down pat for the best airplane that you can have. Again, for what I use it for, because of the speed, the efficiency, low maintenance on these airplanes, and how stable they are, um, how they're built is a plus for me and that's what's perfect for me to keep this airplane and put money into it. Uh, but again I want to thank um, uh, Kurt from Motor Aviation and Motor Aviation company as a whole uh, for sp helping sponsoring me and also I want to thank Dynon uh, for the special partnership um, that we agreed upon um, for me to sponsor Dynon in return. Uh, they're going to help me out with a couple of things on parts and move forward and, and hoping to promote uh, the Dynon uh, family. Uh, you know, just a little, you know, quick things about Dynon. They they did a lot of um, uh, experimental airplanes. Uh, they recently got into uh, certification airplanes. And just like anything else, folks, and everybody says, well, why don't you try Garmin? You know, Aspen's been around. And uh, but you have to understand that uh, no matter uh, what you bring to the table, whatever company brings to the table, it needs to get certified by the FAA. And the FAA has specific checklist that they go by and to make sure that whatever you're putting on the table to certify for general aviation airplanes is needs to, needs to go through a checklist and needs to go through a process to get approved or you can't use it. Um, so the, the, the same checklist that Garmin, that Avidyne, that any other, other manufacturer uh, goes through needs to go through this um, certification process. Um, and you know for me, that's all I need and doing a lot of my research and researching Dynon is that for me and my Mooney M20C Ranger um, and saving myself, you know, 30000 plus dollars was Dynon was the best thing for me to go with. So those are the couple questions I get with the system. Um, does it work also with uh, the, the IFD 540 from Avidyne? Um, yes, it does. Uh, it works very well. Um, with the, I, the, the 540 from Avidyne. Um, you basically, how it's, and simplify it quickly, you do your flight plan at night before you go flying or that day. You send it to your Avidyne 540, which is WAS, we all know that, it's GPS, it's a comm, um, and it has Bluetooth, and you basically download that from your iPad, um, I use Floor Flight, uh, to the uh, 540, and 
and then they go into the Dynon system and you push a button and it carries that over. Because sometimes people don't want it automatically to go from the uh, GPS, you know, right over to the Dynon system. Sometimes people rather just have it on the GPS and just fly um, those headings on the GPS and let Dion, uh, the screen just be clear. Um, but you can push that button and it draws the line for you on the system um, as well. And then it does have the, um, the chart high and low for IFR and it also has the VFR charts uh, for layovers. Uh, weather, you know, weather will pull from the transponder. Avidyne has the uh, terrain awareness, traffic awareness, you know, so much options in these products, folks, and, and now's the time to take advantage, if you can, uh, to, to uh, get your airplane updated uh, for, the, for the price differences. And I said it before, and I'll say it again, is that I respect Garmin, I respect, you know, Avidi, I'm sorry, I respect Garmin, I respect the, the uh, Aspens, um, because it, they're very, very good products. Uh, but my personal opinion, like I said before, is, um, you know, you need to be at a price point where people can afford to, to upgrade their airplanes um, efficiently and effectively. And if you're, you're pricing yourself out of the market, um, you're just not going to get a lot of GA pilots who's going to bite on those products anymore. Because, just like Dynon, they understand the GA pilots, they understand family, they understand they're, they're a great company, and the Dynon's company is great customer service. You, you know, you could actually install it with obviously um, uh, with, a, with a mechanic um, to sign off on it and, and use Dion as a resource for help, no problem. With Garmin, you need to go to a dealership. You gotta you know go through some hoops and hurdles to get stuff done. Um, but it's very they're very very good with that route. And then Dion's got very very again customer service friendly um, environment. Uh, so I think that once these other companies start lowering their prices to compete um, with different systems. It might be some game changers, but you know, again, after the research I've done, and I did a lot of research because I did a lot of research when I bought the airplane to begin with, is that you know I don't want to second guess myself. I don't want to say I should have, I should have, I should have, I should have. I want to do it right the first time and make sure I could afford it and still fly and have a good time. Um, so that's why I went with the Dynon. Again, great people. I want to thank them again for the partnership. I want to thank Motor Aviation again for the sponsorship. You guys are great, been great to me since I've been coming here, and a lot of um, communications between each other, and just great family-oriented aviation uh, company. If you believe in aviation, and if you believe in a product, that's what it's all about. A lot of different places, they just want the money, they just want the money, they forget about the GA aviation family, uh, like myself and other people that are out there who just want to just you know price and price and price and price and figure out how much more they can charge on an annual and upsell you all this different stuff uh, but Moira Aviation is to the point this is what you need so you don't need next annual you might need A B and C they don't just try to sell you everything at one time it's a very very good company and I really respect that and the same thing with the Dynon family a very company that you can respect and they understand the GA uh, people um, the other thing is um, cost uh, quickly. I'll go over this quickly to own an airplane. Um, I had a, I have a whole video on, co on cost to own an airplane. If you want to research it, I can put it you know in the uh, uh, the screen when this video is over, so you guys can click on it. But it goes over the cost of an airplane, and every airplane is different. Literally, every airplane is different. It's different even how you fly it, what you do, your maintenance, how you want to do it. Um, so you know, uh, if you're looking for a Mooney. M23 Ranger, I use again myself as an example on my last video, uh, and you guys can look at look into that as well. Okay, folks, I really don't have anything else today to report. Um, I did put some pictures on my Facebook page. Uh, but I actually have Instagram now, if you can believe it. I have Instagram, so you can follow me that on that's Pilot Fun 101 also on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for your support on Facebook. Uh, over 14,000 followers now on Facebook. Thank you guys. And any questions you have, uh, pilotfun101 at gmail.com. And like I said, I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. I'm getting a lot of questions on Dynon, a lot of questions on the Avidyne 540, on how it all works. Uh, and once I get this in the airplane and it's done, hopefully with the next two, three weeks, um, I can go into detail how everything will work and what it does with all the systems um, that goes on. 
So we're getting there, folks, and I appreciate all the emails. Um, thank you so much for the support. And like always, folks, fly safe, be safe, and I'll see you guys next time.